Hi folks, welcome to the second example from chapter six. And so in this video, we're gonna take a look at question number five. All right, so we'll look at some version of question number five. So in this one, it says, suppose that the weight of seedless watermelons is normally distributed with mean of 6.2 kilograms and standard deviation 1.1 kilograms. Let X be the weight of a randomly selected seedless watermelon. We round all answers to four decimal places where possible. Okay, so part A says, what is the distribution of X? And so just like the last example, when we have this N squiggle or the X squiggle N, we need our mean in the first part, and then we need our standard deviation in the second part, okay? Uh, oops, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> ignore that. But we are gonna have 6.2, comma 1.1. Okay, so we have a 6.2 kilogram as the mean and a standard deviation of 1.1 kilograms. And so before we do the rest of it, I do want to sketch a quick um, normal distribution down here. Okay, that's not exactly balanced, but you know what I'm going for. Okay, so the cool thing about this is this is our mean, right? This is 6.2. And then from the last video, we know that if we go out like one standard deviation, we end up with 68% of our data falls within that first standard deviation out. Um, <clears throat> when we go out two standard deviations, we actually end up at 95%. And then I forget what color we used for the last one. We'll go with green. Uh, but if you go three standard deviations out, you're actually at 99.7% um, of the data falls within there. Okay, so that's our empirical rule. And it's kind of helpful to remember. Okay, but let's take a look at the question now. <clears throat> Part B says, what is the median seedless watermelon weight? Now, in our question, we're actually given the mean but the neat thing about a uh, normally distributed situation is that the mean is actually the same as the median. So if I zoom in here, I'm gonna say that it is also 6.2 because in the normal distribution, the mean and the median are the same, okay? Now that's not gonna be true for every distribution we look at. So the key word here is that we have a normal distribution, okay? All right. <clears throat> All right, part C, what is the Z score for a seedless watermelon weighing 7.7 .7 kilograms, okay? Now, I know there's a sort of a lot of terminology, but a Z score at the end of the day really just means how many standard deviations from the mean is that data point. Okay, so it's like, how many standard deviations? Is it one standard deviation away? Is it two standard deviations away? Is it three standard deviations away? Or is it like 1.7 standard deviations, right? So it doesn't have to be a whole standard deviation. It might be somewhere in between there. And I think maybe we can imagine that when we're looking at our diagram, anything on this side will have a positive z-score but anything on the other side that's like lower than the mean, that's going to have a negative z-score because I'm going in the negative direction, okay? So luckily for us, we have a formula for this. So let's write that formula down. Our z-score is our value minus mu, which is our mean, over sigma, which is our standard deviation. And when I plug in all of my values, I didn't leave myself enough room, so I'll do it down here. 7.7 .7 minus 6.2 over 1.1. And when I type that into the calculator, the value I get is 1.3636, right? Now, the number after 6 is 3. And so that means that I'm just going to keep the 6. I don't round it up to 7. Because um, again, we want to make sure that we're rounding correct. Okay. All right. 
part D, what is the probability that a randomly selected watermelon will weigh more than 6.1 kilograms? Okay. And so if we kind of look at these last three, okay, what is the probability? What is the probability? What's the percentile? This is when we should go to our stat crunch and kind of type in some value. Okay. So let's see what we get. All right, so I'm going to go to stat crunch. I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to go to calculator. Oh, why is it doing this again? All right, let's try this again. Stat, calculator, there we go. Then we're going to go to normal distribution. Now, part D says, what is the probability that a randomly selected watermelon will weigh more than 6.1? So it's not a between, but it's just the standard one, okay? So I'm going to type in my mean. My mean is 6.2. My standard deviation is 1.1. And I want to see when it's going to be more than, not zero, but more than 6.1 kilograms, okay? Now, when I compute, this should look like we're, everything is colored to the right of 6.1, okay? And we can see that, like the right half of the graph is red. And if we look down here, we see that that probability is 0.5362, okay? And there's a one after the two, so we're just gonna keep it as 0.56, uh, five, five, two, six, five, three, six, two, okay? So we're gonna have point five, uh, three, six, two. Okay, so let's see um, part E. What is the probability that a randomly selected seedless watermelon will weigh between 6.6 .6 and 7.5 kilograms? Okay, so the between means I need to click the between button on the calculator for stack crunch. And I want to be between, not between negative one and one, but I want to be between, let's see, 6.6, .6. okay, and 7.5, and I click compute. Great. So we can see that we're looking at a slice that's between 6.6 .6 and 7.5, and the probability that we will, that a randomly selected watermelon will weigh somewhere in that red zone is 0.2394, okay? So 0.2394. So about a 23 or 24% chance that this is gonna happen. All right, part F, the 75th percentile for the weight of a seedless watermelon is how many kilograms? Now, at a specific percentile, I wanna go back to the standard, okay? So I wanna know um, how many are less than or equal to, whoop, and I wanna have 0.75, right? That 0.75 is, the um or is the percentile that I'm looking for, right? So like 75% of things are less than that. That means that in my picture, I should see most of the area under the bell curve shaded. Okay. And now when I look at my value, stat crunch tells me that um the 75th percentile is going to be at 6.9419 kilograms, okay? So I can go ahead and write that down, 6.9419 kilograms, and that is going to be the 75th percentile of seedless watermelons, okay? So if, you, if we find a watermelon that weighs 6.9419 kilograms, that means 75% of the other watermelons weigh less than this particular watermelon, okay? All right, hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you soon.